Words at War. This is my curious Salvatore town cry of the town of Adano, Provinci di Vincina, Mari, Italy. Listen, the people of Adano, the Americani have come. Do they bring with them the for freedom and the national bundle? Do you think we will ever forget the car on the road and the voice of the general? But to my friends, the general, he doesn't realize how important the cards are to Adano. No, no, no. But this Maggiore is a friend. Wait, wait. You will see. National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with the Council on Books in Wartime, presents Words at War. Tonight we bring you a novel by John Hersey, A Bell for Adano. It is about Americans in Italy, thoughtful Americans and Americans not so thoughtful. In particular, it is about one man, an Italian-American named Major Victor Giopolo. My curious Salvatore town cry of the town of Adano, province of Vicina Mari, Italy. I want you to know and understand the man, Mr. Maggiore Vittorio Giopolo of the Allied military government occupied the territory. I want you to know that the Americans who have come to the town of Adano are friends of my curious Salvatore. The Americans wish you to be your friends. They will change things and help you. If you have complaints, if you got problems, you do not have to be afraid to speak. You can go to the city hall and speak with the Major Yopolo, the assistant sergeant of birth. That's all. I have cried. Time, just a minute, you'll all get a chance. Now you. Si, signor. Who are you? Zito Giuseppe. I've been a well-known as antifascist. What kind of work did you do? I'm usher in the Palazzo di Città. An usher? I'm a hated the fascist. I'm a hated the fascist for many years. Everybody knows I'm antifascist. You hated them so much, why'd you work for them? One that must eat. One that must make a living. I have a six of bambini. All right, so you were a fascist. Now you'll have to learn to live in a democracy. Uh, you'll be my usher. Ah, grazie, signor Maggio. Grazie, Danda. Yes, signor Maggio. Danda, Has grazie. Has it been bad here? Such a bombardment. Such a raid. Yes, very bad. And we are hungry. For three days, we have no bread. All the important ones ran away and left me here to guard the palazzo. Some people are sick because of the drivers of the water carts have not had the courage to get a water for several days because of the airplanes along the road. I see. And you, what's your name? Ribardo Giuseppe. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. I've been here three years. <laughs> Cleveland, huh? Okay. Well, how are you? You'll be my interpreter. You don't speak Italian? Well, yes, I do, but there'll be other Americans who don't, and I may need you for other things, too. That's sure anything. I fix it. Now, tell me, what does this town need most? Food, boss. Food is bad now in Adano. Why's that? Shortage of flour? And no, everyone's been scared. Bakers don't work, and nobody sell a pasta. Water don't come in the carts. That's all about. Oh, please, please, I tell you what Adano needs. I tell him already what she needs, food. Uh, all you think of is the stomach. Uh, what's the matter with the stomach? Uh, uh, it's 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 he always thinks of the stomach. Uh, but who are you? <laughs> My name is Cacopardo, at your service, Majore. Antifascisti. I am 82. I own most of the sulfurs in this place. Here, Cacopardo is sulfur, and the sulfur is Cacopardo. I wish to give you advice whenever you need it. Well, then tell me, what do you think this town needs the most right now? It needs a bell more than anything. A, a bell? See, si, senor, a bell. 
Il fascista took her a bell. The guy's bomb may drop along quiet, boy. Um, what's this about a bell? In Adana, senor, we had a bell, a beautiful bell. It was 700 years old. And this is Villayago, this Mosini, he took it to make a cannon or something. I, I tell you, the town was very angry about it. Oh, yes, very angry. But even so, what we need the most is a food. To eat is more necessary than a bell. The town needs the bell. People who are hungry, they have a ringing in the ears. They no need the bells. Zito, what do you say? Do you consider the food or the bell more important? Mm, I think the bell. You do? Why, Zito? Uh, because, uh, because uh, the tone of the bell was, was uh, so satisfactory. Please, Major, this bell was the center of the town. All her life revolved around it. The farmers in the country were awakened by it in the morning. The drivers of the carts knew when to start by it. The bakers are baked by it. Our bell was a dano. I see. Well, it looks like we'll have to do something about getting another bell, Sergeant Boy. Are you kidding? Well, the bell's important to them. Oh, now, Javalo, forget about the bell. Get them some food and clean up the streets for this bell business. It's... It's not practical. It's it's too sentimental. Maybe so, but the bell is important. The bell must have a good tone. The bell must have a meaning. You should be allowed the bell to tell us when to eat. Okay, okay, all right. Thank you for telling me about the bell. I promise you that I'll do all I can to get another bell. One which will have some meaning, a good tone, and... Well, its history will be that it was given to you by the Americans to take the place of the one which was taken away by the fascists to make cannon. So they took the bell away on the 14th, Sito. Yes, Senor Major. Well, considering how things are done in the Italian army, perhaps not much has been done with the bell. Why was it sent, Sito? To the provincial government at the town of Vichinimar. Perhaps it got no further. Perhaps the bell's still sitting in its crate in Vichinimar. You think it's possible? It's uh, possible, but we'll make sure. We'll find out. Up below, you got bats in your belt. Well, yeah, boy. And take a memo to Lieutenant Colonel R.N. Sartorius, CAO, Vichinimari, province of Vichinimari. Subject, bell belonging to town of Adano. Would very much appreciate your initiating investigation of provincial government of Vichinimari to see if you can trace this Now, this bell. is silly, Did I you... tell you, Javelo. You're too sentimental for your own good. Touch it, lay off. Now, send that memo. But really, That's an no, order, but... Sergeant Ford. Yes, sir. Topolo, General Marvin's outside in his car, and he wants to see you. General Marvin? Yeah, and he's hopping mad, so you better hurry. What's he sore about this time? I don't know, but you'd better... Hey, look at you in them pants and cocky shirt. If he sees you in those... Why... Hey, you, what do you mean by keeping the general waiting? Yes, sir, be right out. I hope he doesn't notice them fancy pants. Well, it's about time, Major. Come on, the general's waiting in his car for you. Yes, sir. Oh, there you are. One minute and 20 seconds. You've been keeping me waiting one minute and 20 seconds. You think I have all day to wait for you? Who are you, anyway? Major Joppolo, sir, Senior Civilian Affairs Officer, Town of Adano, sir. Oh, well, Major, these Italian carts are holding up our whole invasion. I had to throw one of them off the road. I had to shoot the mule. Now, listen. You keep them out of this blasted town, do you hear? Don't you let another blasted cart come across that blasted bridge back there into this town. What the devil is this town, anyway? Uh, Adano, sir, Town of Adano. Adano. Well, keep those blasted, broken-down carts out of this town, you hear me? Yes, sir, I'll take care of that right away. Right away? That's not soon enough for me. Well, sir, I'll go right in and call the MPs and tell them about That's it. That's not soon enough. By the eternal... Listen, I want action. No more blasted carts. Middleton. Yes, sir? Adano's the name of this town. Remember that, Middleton? Adano. Yes, sir. Driver, do you think I got all day? Let's get out of here. Fourth, get Captain Purvis on the phone. Sure, Sourpuss. What hit you? General Marvin. Give me Captain Purvis. What did he want? If you just knew what it meant. Here's Purvis. Yeah. Captain Purvis, this is Major Joppolo. Here's an order from General Marvin. Keep all carts out of Adano. Stop them at the bridge on the east and at the sulfur refinery on the west. Yeah, you got it right the first time. What? He's a what? Yeah, I know. Me 
Mr. Major. Everyone knows me, a fronty Pietro. Everyone knows how a fronty has talked about the day yes. the American would come. Uh, yeah, please, come to the point. Uh, I wish to tell you about my cart. The wheels used to sing a song when I drove my cart. Do you wish to hear this song, Mr. Major? No, no, well, please listen. Come... The Americans are coming here, Senora Fronti. But, the oh, Americans man. are very just to men. Please. Especially but with the... Do not joke with me. The music... The music is stopped. There is no more music. Please, do not shout here. You seem to think that Americans are deaf men. We are not deaf, so don't shout. But the music has stopped. There is no more music. Mr. Major, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Major. You. What is your name? Me? Uh, Erba Carlo. What can I do for you? For me? Uh, excuse me, excuse him, Mr. Majore. He is, his head, his tongue is slow to speak. Everybody uh, tell him about the water carts. Uh, see, see, it's about the water carts, Mr. Major. Mr. Major, yes. I, I, they, 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 uh, they, uh, the uh, cart. Uh, tell him about your cart, Erba. Uh, my cart, my cart is big. Outside it's dirty, but inside it's clean. It, it holds water. Uh, my friend drink the water. Yes. Yes, my friend. Uh, Tell me some more about the water cart. Uh, uh, the thirst, the, the, the great thirst. The, uh, yes, yes. You will not let my cart across the bridge. Uh, there is no water in Adano without my cart and the other water cart. Uh, uh, there, there is a thirst in Adano. Uh, since yesterday morning at 11 o'clock, there is a, a great thirst. Uh, uh, all right, uh, all it right. is all because of the bridge uh, and the cart. Uh, and, uh, and, and by the proclamation uh, of the uh, matter of a being a clean. Yes, yes, yes. Remember the, oh, the yes, thing. the proclamation. In uh, one of uh, on one uh, proclamation, Mr. Major. I forgot the number of the proclamation. There are so many. Does the number matter, Mr. Major? No, the number does not matter. Uh, grazie. The proclamation says it's necessary to be clean. It says that people must be clean with water, uh, and even the street must be clean. Uh, to be clean takes much water. Uh, my car is on the other side of the bridge, Mr. Major. The cleanliness is very important, Erba. Uh, we must make Adano the cleanest town in the whole province of Vicina Ma. See, see, we, we will do this thing, even if the dirt had piled up since, since, since a long time ago. But, but my cart is on the other side of the bridge. You ever say it may not pass. Christ. You better think twice, my dear. You want General Marvin to break here, you dope? I made up my mind. Don't do it. Listen, Joppolo, listen to your head. Shut not up. Your heart. Okay, it's on your head, brother. Herba, Vasily, Fronti, I'll have the order changed. You may bring your carts into the town. Oh, oh brother, as the general finds out about that. There never has been a thing like this. The poor should come to the when, when the people come and take water from my cart to drink for their taste, I shall say to them, Thank you, Mr. Major, my friend. Yeah, look, get out of here. You're wasting my time and the time of the people who are waiting outside the door. Fourth, get me Captain Purvis over at the MP building. Boy, are you sticking your neck out? Get me Captain Purvis. I know what I'm doing. Famous last word. Mm. Hello, Purvis? There you are, Joppolo. Purvis? Joppolo, listen. By one sentence, General Marvin destroyed the work of nine days in this town. I know it may mean a court-martial, but I've decided to countermand his order. I, I know I'm taking a chance, but I've got to do it. This town's dying. No food can get in if the carts don't come in. This town depends on the carts for water. There isn't any running water here, you know. People will die. I'm not here to kill people. Juan? Juan? No, wait a minute. Juan? You'll do What? Listen, Purvis, I order you on my authority to start letting the carts back into the town beginning now. I take absolute and complete responsibility for countermanding General Marvin's order. What's that? Listen, friend, if we never took chances around here, this place would go right on being a fascism. All right, you know what you can do. It's on my responsibility.
Hey, Trapani. Schultz. Yes, sir. What's wrong now, Captain? Chapolo wants to let the carts back into town. If General Marvin should drive back through here, we'd all get hung for it. Just to cover ourselves, we'll make out a report saying just what happened. The General Marvin ordered us to keep the carts out, but Major Chapolo countermanded the order. You make it out, Trapani, and send it to G1 of the division. I'm going out to take the guards off the road by the bridge. How do you like that guy, Chapolo? I'm not going to burn for him. Well, how do you like that, Schultz? Ah, oh, General Marvin's liable never to come back here. And if he did, he'd probably never notice the carts. Yeah, but once you get the thing on paper, it's just a sure way to ruin the Major. And he's so right about those carts anyway. So go hire a hall. I got headaches of my own. Well, it's just... It's just, it's just. What's it to you, anyway? It's no skin off of your head. I just hate to see a guy get in trouble when he's trying to do right. All right, well, then why don't you write the memo and then put the wrong address on it and sort of let it get lost accidentally on papers? Accidentally on papers? You mean it? Sure. You're Italian, Italian, ain't you? And this Chapolo is trying to help these Italians, ain't he? Yeah. Well, you can make a mistake, can't you? Maybe the memo won't get to the general for a long time. Maybe it'll never get to him. Yeah. You know, Schultz, sometimes I think you're a bright boy. A very bright boy. My curious salvatore of town crier. The Mr. Maggiore, Giappolo, is rebuilding our town so we can all eat and a drink and a sing and a be happy. But you laughed when I say this before because of the cards. Now I laugh at you. The Maggiore, Giappolo, says that the cards come into the town again. You hear? It is like I tell you. The Americans are here to help you. And the majority is trying to get us a bell, too. That's all. Hello, Jopolo, Amgar. Jopolo, this is Sartorius up at Vincent Amari. Oh, hello, Colonel. About that bell, yeah? they shipped it off to the Fecorata Artillery Foundry. Oh, well, I guess it's just a chunk of cannon now. These people down here will be brokenhearted. Well, thanks anyway, Sartorius. Glad to do you a favor, Chapolo, any time. Say, why don't you try General Wilson in Algiers? Who? Wilson, quartermaster depot, Algiers. He's pretty good at getting things. Got some odds and ends for me once or twice. Well, wait a minute, uh, boy. Yes, sir? Write down this address. Okay, Sartorius, let's have it. General W.B. Wilson. General W.B. Wilson. Quartermaster depot. Quartermaster depot. Yeah. Algiers. Algiers. You got that, boy? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Sartorius. Any time. <laughs> well, well, Bye. Uh, Both, I want you to get a letter off. To I know, I know. Got a letter here from General Wilson, Jabalo. Oh, good. What's the score? No hits, no runs, your error. Oh. He says he doesn't have a 700-year-old bell, and don't you realize there's a war going on? Uh, Jabalo, why don't you forget it? I, I can't. I keep thinking of it all the time. You know, Boyth... I think I want to get this town the right bell more than I've ever wanted anything in my life. Boy, when you go out on a limb. Listen, if headquarters ever finds out about the time you've been putting in on this oh, bell business... Forget about headquarters. I wish I could. But if General Marvin ever finds out about the carts Look, and then this business... Let's try the Navy. What am I Just one track. Didn't you even hear what I was saying? Sure. Forget it. Listen, uh, that Lieutenant... What's his name? Uh... Livingston, uh, down in the port captain's office. He's a pretty good guy. They're going to fall in love with the Navy now. <laughs> what a guy. Listen, Livingston got his captain's permission for the fisherman to go out and fish again, didn't he? You know, he might be just a man. If the Army can't find your bell, how's the Navy going to do it? Well, most ships have got bells, and they have to be loud and clear so that the men can hear them all over the ship to tell them the hours of the watches. Now huh? he's an expert on the Navy. Get Livingston on the phone. Okay. <laughs> Memos, memos, over oh, something wrong. Can't they write about things being right? What was that last one about, Middleton? Uh, some telephone wire that has been lost on an LST. Oh, they want... the blazes with them. The answer is no. Yes, sir. Now, go on finishing reading those blasted memos, and let's get this thing over with. Think I got all day? Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. To General Marvin, for information, etc., etc., routing address, and so forth. Subject, 
Mule carts, town of Adano. Blasted, broken down mule cart. Uh, on July 19th, orders were received from General Marvin to keep all mule carts out of the town of Adano. Guards were posted at the bridge over Rosso River and at Cacopado Sulfur Refinery. Order carried out. Oh, that's right. Stop the blasted carts. Pesky Italian's trying to hold up the whole blasted invasion. Well, they'd better carry out that order. Yes, sir. On July 20th, guards were removed on order of Major... Uh, well, now, sir... Uh, finish it, memo... finish it, you blasted... Finish it. Yes, sir. The guards were removed on order of Major Victor Joppolo, uh, civil affairs officer, town of Adana, because the carts were essential to the town, and town Joppolo! Was... Joppolo! Listen, do you remember the name of Joppolo, Colonel Milton? Yes, sir, the cart. Yeah, yeah, huh. I just remembered something. That Joppolo was out of uniform that day, you remember? Had on pinks and a cocky shirt. You remember that, Middleton? No, sir, I'd forgotten but that. But I haven't. Oh, I've had enough of that radical Joppolo. Yes, sir. Now make out an order recalling that blasted Italian-American pipsqueak from that blasted town that... What's the name of it? Uh... Adano, sir. Well, order him to report back to Algiers for reassignment. Make out a separate report to Algiers explaining why. I'll fix that blasted little baby and get it off today, too, understand? None of your blasted delays now. Do you hear me, Middleton? Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> This is my curio, Salvatore, your town of Crier. Listen, the people of Adano. I am to tell you this. A committee has been formed which has in turn made up of plans for a party. A party to honor the good Mr. Majori Victor Giappolo for the wonderful things he's done in rebuilding our town. <laughs> yes, this town, Adano, is much better off since the Americans have come. And there will be a bell, too. So come to the party tonight and celebrate the coming of the Americans and honor the Mr. Majori Joppolo and come to the party. <laughs> That's all. You told me you were in here and that you're acting like a crazy man. What's the matter with you? Uh, Joppolo, you're fired. You've been relieved. You're nobody around here. Oh, you sentimental ape, you big... Oh, come on, board. You need to soak your head in some cold water. I'll go soak your own fat head. Now, board. Take your hands off me. Here, read that. You're authorized to proceed by first available transportation to... FHQ Algiers for reassignment of station. The reason for this order is that reference to the willfully and without consultation countermand orders issued by General Marvin, 49th Division. Reentry of mule carts into town of Adano. Signed General Marvin. Where'd you get this? Your desk. I wanted to keep you from saying it until after the party. Don't look like that, Joppolo. Let's go back to the party. And don't say a word, Morth. It wouldn't be fair to spoil their fun. Ain't you ever gonna grow up and think of yourself first, you big Shut lug? Up. Come on, Morth. Smile. Forget it. Yes, sir. You ready, sir? Yeah. Papers are all arranged. You call for a jeep? Yes, sir. It's better to go this way in the morning, boy. I don't want to say goodbye to anyone. I don't know whether I could. I'm sorry I got lit last night, Major. My intentions were good. I mean, I wanted you to have a good time at the party. I don't know. Borth, try to help whoever takes my place. Do a good job in Adano. Adano needs you, Major. Yeah, it's too late to talk about that. I wonder how Marvin ever found out about the carts. Oh, one of his staff must have driven through or something. Yeah, I guess so. Listen, Borth, keep after Livingston. 
About the bell, you mean? Yeah. It should be a loud bell with a tone to it, with a history to it. It should stand for the things I believe in. The boys are building a new scaffolding for it, Major. It'll be ready for it when it comes. Tell the guy that takes my place that I wanted them to be happy here. I wanted all of them to have as much as they could of what they wanted without hurting anyone else. That's what I wanted in Adano. I'll tell him, Major. Well, let's go. The Jeep's here. So long, boy. So long, Topo. Let's go, driver. Yes, sir. What's the matter, sir? Don't you feel well? No. Uh, I was thinking of all the things I ever wanted. Nothing. Yes, sir. Driver, stop a minute, will you, please? Yes, sir. Listen. Do you hear something? Just a bell. Must be... Eleven o'clock. Yes. Just a bell. Just a bell. It's just the bell. Mr. Major Victor Joppola, USA, was a good man. That is the whole reason why I have told you everything that is happening. America is on its way to Europe. There will be a few Americans who do not understand us. But there will be others, good ones. Good ones like the Major Joppola, who brought the understanding and a help and a freedom and the bell. A bell for a dog. As the 42nd program of the Words at War series, we have presented A Bell for a Dono by John Hersey, the book which has just been awarded by the Council on Books in Wartime, the rare designation of imperative, and which is to be made into a motion picture by 20th Century Fox. The radio adaptation was made by Lawrence Mencken. Barry Kroger played Major Joppolo, and Daniel Ako played Mercurio, the town crier. Others in the cast included Myron McCormick, Alan Drake, James Van Dyke, Rolf Sedan, Jackson Beck, John Alessino, Nino Ruggieri, and Tommy Nello. The music was arranged and played by William Meader, and the entire production was under the direction of Anton M. Leader. <laughs> We have an important announcement to make for next week. On the night of February 22nd, the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated independent stations broadcast an outstanding program on this Words at War series, a program called Assignment USA. Of this program, Variety, that provocative and unusual weekly of the show world, said, The stuff with which this half hour scorched the air made your ears burn. It was hard to believe even after you heard it. That's the kind of program it was. The kind the country needs. The kind radio needs. In its columns, Variety twice pointed out to NBC that radio as an industry needs these sock shows and somewhat acidly urged a repetition of Assignment USA. In response to these urgings, the National Broadcasting Company will repeat this program next Tuesday evening. The nation should hear this very excellent show. We hope you won't miss Assignment USA. 
This is the National Broadcasting Company. Thank you.